Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Hey, you are here. It's a little bit different. You guys have some elbow room this morning, huh? What do you think? Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to keep people from being too close, you know, and breathing on. The last thing we want to do is share breath, right? That's the last thing we want to do with different people. So uh, thank you guys for coming. We really appreciate you being here today. Uh, our worship experience is going to be quite a bit different today, but we're going to do what we always do. We're going to begin our worship experience by praising God. Are you guys ready to do that? So let's go ahead and stand up and let's begin with, uh, with a word of prayer. Father God, you are powerful. You are awesome. It is our glorious pleasure, Father, to be able to lift up our voices to you and to praise you and to acknowledge that you are sovereign and you are God and you are ruler over all. You're ruler over every moment, over every, every principle, everything that can go on in this world. And we thank you for that, Father. We lift our voices and we praise you. We pray and thank you for your presence here. In Christ's name, amen. So if you, uh, if you watch the news, you see like a lot of craziness, a lot of people going into stores, buying a lot of stuff. It seems like it's really chaotic. And just, there's no hope for a lot of people out there. But as Christians, we have that hope. And the psalmist says in Psalms 135, 1 through 3, he says, Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Give praise, O servants of the Lord, who stand in the house, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name.
Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the saints, let every nation shout of your fame. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom. There'll be a church ready for you. Every heart longing for a king. We sing, even so come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so come, Lord Jesus, come. There will be just. shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for it is he to, who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with opinions, and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield. Come 
God, we thank you for letting us come here together and to worship you. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you for the promise that you are returning. And um, God, I pray that uh, you would just uh, calm our nerves and calm our hearts as um, as we uh, listen to these these next announcements. And um, God, help us to put our trust in you. It's in your name we pray, amen. Sorry, I couldn't see. Couldn't see up here in the dark. I think I got it on, but I can't tell for sure. If you want to check and see, I can use this one if it's not. Test, test, test. This one might be working. All right, I got the mic, the lapel on too. If you want to double check it. Hey, sorry, I couldn't see this. See if it was on or off. It's good to see you all. It's been a while since I've been in chapel, and uh, you know, you guys have uh, accommodated very nicely some of the things that we're um, uh, having to deal with. Um, we have a few announcements to make today. First, I want to start by. Um, asking our basketball teams and their coaches to come forward. So I'm going to see if the girls can stay on this side and the guys on this side just so the teams can stay together and the coaches here in the middle. And if you guys will come on up real quick. I wanted to do this because uh, our teams this year did an incredible job um, finishing a season strong with uh, a variety of uh, challenges to overcome, uh, some, some new uh, opportunities but also some new challenges. And I wanted the coaches to get a chance to tell you a little bit uh, just about the honors that some of them received. Also, um, if you've been trying to watch sports on TV and you realize how hard that is when all the sports are canceled, I've been, re I've been seeing little featurettes on teams that, uh, you know, didn't get to end the season that they thought they were going to. And I realized that for all the hard work people put in, sometimes it's, it's, not, uh, it's not acknowledged. And so I wanted our coaches to do that. So let me see if I can find Jack and Brandon to come this way and Megan. Megan, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about some of the honors that your team received and how they finished the season. Sure. First of all, we'd like to say thank you guys. Um, you guys are awesome when you come to our games. All of the signs, all of the yelling, as we sometimes look at you guys because it's very entertaining. We do really, really, really appreciate it. So we just you like to say thank you to you guys. Um, Can you say we, we definitely feel like we have a home court advantage when we are here, and that is very nice for us. I think we can all say that. So thank you so much. That does mean a lot to us. Um, where, where should we start? I don't know. Um, we ended up finishing third place at conference tournament. We went in as the number five seed, I believe, and finished third. Um, so that says... That says a whole lot about these ladies and their perseverance and they're willing to fight. And so we're very proud of them. Um, we did have two all-conference players in Lauren Mills and Taylor Branch. And that is rightfully so. They'll be the first people to tell you that they're a team player and they're all about the team. So we'd like to commend them for that. And we're very proud of that uh, success. Very proud of all of these ladies. Um, thankful for them. And we've had a great year. We're looking forward to next year. Um, I wish we had a game here in two weeks. I don't know if they'd say the same. I'm missing practice a little bit. Um, but thank you guys. We really appreciate it. I just want to um, affirm a couple of things. First of all, how uh, impressed I was with the character and hard work shown by our uh, girls team this year in the midst of several adversities, including uh, different injuries and different uh, uh, issues that came up. Uh, Megan did an outstanding job with them. She's already recruiting hard for next year, bringing uh, potential students into the program to find out more about them, working with her uh, current girls to, to have them back next semester. And uh, we, just, uh, we just love the effort that they put in and the way that they worked hard to demonstrate what it means to be a saint uh, on and off the court. So thanks again, Megan and uh, Lady Saints. All right, and Jack made it. He's been in childcare mode for a moment, but uh, he was able to escape long enough to come up here, and he's going to talk just a little bit about his guys and his team. Hey, first of all, I want to take the time to honor Kedron Rawlings. He scored his 1,000th point. <laughs> this was on February 21st at the conference tournament against Emmaus Bible College. Uh, 
Um, we had a couple all-conference players. Uh, Clifford Detige was a second-team all-conference. Andre Johnson was first-team all-conference. As far as all-region play, we had three that earned all-region honors. Uh, Josh Crawford was sec third team, third team all-region. Clifford Detige was uh, also third team, second team, and Andre Johnson was second team. So congrats to those guys. Hey, I thought our season, uh, we, did, we probably didn't, I think everybody on the stage would say we probably didn't finish as well as we wanted to. Um, the good thing is we're losing only one senior. We got a chance to bring everybody else back. So a team that was ranked all season, bringing everybody back. I like, the, I like our odds next year. One more thing real quick. Uh, Brandon Bailey served as the assistant coach on the men's side, and Alan Wilson, who's not up here, I'm not sure where he is. He's in here off working in his office. Alan Wilson served as the assistant coach on the women's side, and uh, they poured a lot of time and energy into the trips and the team and helping to support the coaches. So really was a great effort this season. I want to appreciate them for their work. Thanks, guys. And Jack is working hard also finding new players for next year and working with his team. So uh, we're glad to have uh, these, these two leading their programs and leading us into the future. You know, in the last uh, 14 days or so, uh, you have been um, firsthand witnesses to, if you've been watching the news or paying attention to uh, various announcements from around the country, um, an amazing uh, event in our um, in our nations and in our world's history. Um, just as a little bit of a reflection, people usually mark generational change by life-changing events like 9/11 and the assassination of President Kennedy and the Challenger um, Challenger crash in the early 1980s. And my uh, assumption is this will be the generational pivot event. Uh, after which everything's different and, and things change that you know nobody imagined beforehand. And uh, in all of those cases, that has led to you know, some things that were never the same, but other opportunities that were never imagined before. And um, there are certain aspects of that that are happening right now. We won't go into that at this particular, uh, at this particular chapel service. Uh, I asked our chapel speaker for today, who's coming from out of town, uh, not to come because we want to take some time uh, to unpack our announcement and um, to share just a little bit with you about what our plans are as we've been uh, listening to various uh, uh, guidance given by lots of other places. But I, I want to spend just a moment in Scripture, um, and I want you to think about something that was sung about earlier. Uh, once again, and, and, and I hope always you realize this, that the experience of worship together is so important to put into perspective what's happening around us. You know, in worship, we come away from focusing on what's happening in our world and in our life to focus on the eternal God and the eternal word and the eternal truths that it shares. One of the songs that was talking about the coming of Christ took my mind to Revelation chapter 6 that describes this scroll being unrolled. And the scroll in Revelation chapter 6 is a symbol of history. And their documents back then were not flipped page to page, but were unrolled like a big, long, continuous sheet of paper. Or you might say scrolling on your phone. Just keep on scrolling and see what's happening next. And in Revelation chapter 6, there's a list of things that would be a safe assumption to happen on earth, while in heaven, God is watching and waiting and um, acting. And, you know, there's a, a sign that comes when the first seal opens of a white horse. And then there's a second seal that comes in chapter 3 of a red horse. And a third seal in chapter 6 of a black horse. And chapter 7, a pale green horse that says authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill by the sword, by famine, by plague, and by the wild animals of the earth. And you could spend some time studying this for yourself, but you'll see that those four seals 
remind us of the suffering and success of this earth that is all subject to the control of Christ and the eternal purpose of God. Because it pivots in the very next verse to verse 10, those that are in heaven slaughtered because of God's word and the testimony, cried out with a loud voice, Lord, the one who is holy and true. How long until you judge and avenge our blood from those who live on the earth? And they were told to rest a little while longer until their number would be complete. Then you go on through and it shows how people are in heaven standing, even while things on earth are, are crumbling in that image. And throughout history, that's happened. You know, it happens in various forms. It happens in various uh, reasons. And uh, this may end up being one example of that. The disease and pestilence that they also sang about in a different song this morning is just a reminder that the earth we are on is a limited place with suffering that does not um, ever fully satisfy us but gives us that much reason to point to heaven. You know, on Sunday I asked Mr. Pelfrey, um, if he wanted to keep teaching or if he was wanting to stay at home, he said, oh, I, I want to keep teaching. If, if I get sick, it gets me to heaven that much sooner. <laughs> and you think, do I have that perspective? Should I have that perspective? Well, that's the perspective of the scripture. That's the way that Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians 4.18, fixing his eyes on what is unseen instead of what is unseen instead of what is seen, because what is unseen is eternal. And he talks about how, you know, if all else fails around us, we have eternity to look forward to. So whatever announcement we make today, can we agree? Pales in comparison with eternity. It pales in importance to the things that different people have suffered and faced through history. And it's just an accommodation to the times that we're in, but we're going to do our best to help you understand how we're going to move forward this semester. We've been paying attention for the last few weeks to the CDC, uh, State of Missouri guidance, Randolph County Health Department, and U.S. government recommendations. And as of today, and as you realize everything can change in a day, these are the guidelines that I want to put in, that I want you to be aware of that we're going to put in place and comment on them. Okay, you can go to the next slide. We are planning to continue and complete the spring 2020 semester. Uh, that is in contrast to some schools that just said, it's over, you know, you get the grades you got, everything's done, and uh, don't do anything else. We believe that our mission is important. We believe that what you're learning is important. We believe that where we're at and the location we're at, we have a way that we can complete, at least as of now, and, and, unless things change. And uh, that includes, the second slide, that our campus will remain open for the spring 2020 semester for various reasons, which I'll get to in just a second. We've been comparing the guidance issued by various colleges. Um, you know, it varies based on your location, based on your size, based on whether you have a commuter campus or whether everybody lives there, whether people are from close or from distance. As we've weighed all those things, we, we believe with the uh, health concerns uh, nationwide being what they are. In some ways, it might be worse for our students to make you leave and go to another place where there's more danger than there actually is here. And so if that is the case, we don't want to just close up shop and say go away because we realize that could put many of our students in a worse situation than staying here. So we will keep our campus open for the spring 2020 semester. Next slide. We're going to let you or help you complete this semester in a method of your choosing, and we're going to describe those methods in just a little bit, um, but realize that one of our values here, uh, personal attention, means that we, we try to take as seriously as possible within the limitations we have how we can make the best possible scenario for each of our students. Um, there are no one-size-fits-all uh, solutions here. Um, there are only, you know, difficult situations, difficult factors to try to weigh, and then to try to make the best accommodations possible. So one option that you may have is um, to go during spring break, you can go to the next slide, I think, to areas without confirmed cases of COVID-19, and that can include staying on campus. If, if you want to be here, there are no cases, I don't think within 125 miles of Moberly. 
Uh, that doesn't mean that couldn't change by tomorrow, but uh, even then, for um, as far as places to be, if you look at the map county by county where Moberly is located, it's a long ways in any direction to a case of, uh, of COVID-19. But if you can go home, if you can go somewhere that has no confirmed cases, um, that, that is an, ex an acceptable option. Remember, we sent out a form to students asking you to report where you've been. We'll be tracking that because if we find that, you know, that somebody has gone to Washington State, a uh, town that's got hundreds and hundreds of cases, we're going to want you to, to not return without proper precautions. But uh, those, are, um, those are our option if, if you want to stay here or if you want to go to a place with, with no confirmed cases. And then we'll complete courses after the spring break with appropriate on-campus precautions. That does not mean all your classes will be offered in the classroom, but you can come back here to complete courses. Some of you don't have internet access at home. Some of you don't have a good place where you could, you know, where you could set up uh, and be a student and have access to books and have access to the, to the work that you need to do. Uh, we're calling this the uh, prayer and Purell plan. You know, you pray and then you sanitize and then you do what you need to do. You know, listen to people talk. We will not have chapel. Um, this will probably be our last chapel in this room, in this large format. We'll be looking for smaller assembly options uh, that will give us a chance to try some new things that we've thought about doing in the past anyway. Um, in various locations on campus where we'll, where we'll have uh, worship experiences and we'll be working on that over uh, Christmas or uh, over spring break. So if you, um, you know, if you come back, don't expect for us to have joint, uh, joint uh, chapel like this, but uh, we will keep the dining hall open. Uh, with seating adjustments, uh, following some of the guidance that's been given uh, for restaurants. Um, we will also have other campus services with limited availability. We may have reduced hours and some of our things. Really, this is a time, if you're going to be here, that you need to be focused on studying, you need to be focused on, you know, uh, staying safe, staying, uh, staying uh, rested, staying healthy, keeping your, uh, keeping your resistance up. So, you know, we, we may not have uh, things like intramural sports and stuff like that that have a, a high deal of uh, high, high amount of interaction and, and op opportunities to, to, uh, to be exposed. But we think that it's safe enough here that, uh, that you can stay. Some of you may choose to stay home after spring break. You can go to the next slide. And complete courses via methods that the professors will use to deliver instruction online. We're working on two of those. Uh, there may be uh, online synchronous attendance by Google Hangouts. Synchronous means you'd have class at the same time you had it anyway. So if you had class at nine o'clock on a Wednesday morning, you'll have class at nine o'clock on a Wednesday morning. You'll just go online to listen and to participate there. There will still be attendance taken. You'll still be able to hear the teacher. You know, you can raise your hand and the teacher can see you on the screen and take a question from you if you want to do that. Uh, you can do that you know, by yourself at home. You can do that at a local you know, coffee shop parking lot or something like that where you can go sit in your car and do that. If students are here on campus, it may be originated from in the classroom. It may be originated from the professor's home, depending on the professor. It may be originated from the professor's office. You know, If they don't have strong internet at home and they want to sit in their office and teach it, to minimize their interaction, they may do that, and students may be in groups of three or four watching together. But the fact is, we'll be able to deliver courses that way using our G Suite system or asynchronous attendance via Canvas online assignments. Uh, we realize that for some people, if they go home, they may be in a situation where they're uh, serving as a caregiver of, of a child or or they're working certain hours of the day and not able to continue classes meeting at the same time that they met. So we'll be uh, putting that alternative in there as well to accommodate those students. And uh, just for a, a slight time out here, some people are saying this is really an opportunity in higher education for us to stretch and grow across the board at, at getting better at doing things that can be um, helpful for student learning and help us assess student learning. And I'm looking at it at that as that opportunity. I mean, yes, it's, it's, a, it's a situation we want to prevent problems, but it's also an opportunity for us to, to do some things a little bit differently, a little bit better, help you out in some ways, and 
add to your educational flexibility in the future. So if you choose to stay home after spring break, you can do that, and uh, you, can, uh, you can take uh, your classes completed in that way. If after spring break you travel to areas with confirmed cases of COVID-19, you will have to petition to return to campus as long as you have had no exposure and you're asymptomatic. And you'll, you'll see very soon, I think Google's getting ready to spin up a website where you can answer several questions about how you feel and it will tell you whether you should be tested or whether you know, your symptoms don't have anything to do with COVID. I mean, if, if you're just feeling you know, kind of sick to your stomach, but you have the other three or four um, uh, symptoms not there, it's not going to be helpful for you to go and demand to be tested because the test is going to come back negative. In fact, I heard the other day, I think 99% of the tests are coming back negative. People that are asking to be tested, they don't have this. They have something else, but they don't have this. And, and there's some screening that can take place to minimize that. Um, but if you are symptomatic or if you've been exposed, and, and it can happen, I mean, it can happen without you realizing it until it's too late in your town because, you know, you went to um, a store or you went to the, the doctor for something else and found out that a nurse that treated you had treated a different patient. They're, they're working very hard to prevent that from happening, and I, I believe that our... our um, medical system is uh, very careful about that right now but as you know things can change and things can happen so if that ends up being you we'll, we'll ask you to stay home and finish your classes there all right next slide you get to determine your course of action by um, tomorrow afternoon at four o'clock we'll be emailing you a form we want to track what you're planning to do just so we know how to better serve you and it'll give you the choices of uh, whether you're gonna stay local, which is fine. If you wanna stay here and stay here during the, during the spring break, you can do that. If you wanna leave and come back, but you're going to a, you know, a safe place, we'll track where you're going to and be in touch with you. Or if you're gonna leave and stay away um, because of whatever reason has come up, we'll give you that opportunity as well. You'll get an email about that where you can notify us by tomorrow at four o'clock. We're also going to start spring break one day early. So if you can go to the next uh, form, uh, we will have classes today and tomorrow, and we urge you to go to classes today and tomorrow. Um, the teachers will be helping you get prepared for what it's like to finish this semester if uh, changes to the syllabus have been made. I know yesterday in the faculty meeting, one of the things that was brought up was that uh, the teachers would likely prepare a sort of a syllabus addendum that would tell you in the online completion mode here's what it would take to do that and so uh, you'll want to know what that is and how to make that happen uh, our suggestion is that you take the textbooks home with you either way even if you plan to come back realizing that something could change and if you plan to stay take your textbooks home with you we'll have a mechanism by which you can return those if it turns out later that coming back it isn't in your plan um, you know, the mail is still going to run and other services are still going to happen. So we'll be able to get those back from you even if you have uh, rentals. We will plan to resume classes on Tuesday morning, March 31st, with the instruction following the online availability. And again, it may or may not be in a classroom. That'll be sort of up to the teacher and it'll sort of be up to what the class does. So for instance, you could see a world where if a class has, you know, nine out of 10 students are staying home, probably the teacher is not going to show up to teach one student face to face but they might and, or they might do it in their office and say hey you, you come to my office i'll put the video camera on we can talk face to face so i got somebody live in front of me and everybody else is watching it remotely so that is kind of up in the air based on the teacher's needs and based on the needs of the class and the responses of the class now you need to realize this situation may be affected by ongoing state and or federal decisions so we will be email, uh, emailing students as things change. And I wanna give you just a moment right now, you can take out your phone. If you have a question about this, I can't promise I'm going to answer every question right now, but I've set up a text number there where we can keep track of these questions, come up with the best answers to them and have a frequently asked questions page. But uh, if you have a question that this brings up in your mind that you feel like wasn't answered uh, as a whole, if there's something that I think affects a lot of people, I will do my best to, to quickly address it. If it's something that's very specific, we'll get back to you in the next few hours. 
we are going to try and uh, let out chapel just a little bit early today because we want to make sure that people are, um, that people are uh, able to, if they need to call home or start conversing with their parents and getting their parents' input on this, uh, we want to be able to have you uh, be aware of that. So one of the questions that's been uh, asked is about commencement and whether we're going to have commencement here or not. We've seen schools go both ways with that. Uh, we've seen some say it's off and don't even, don't even ask. We've seen others say it's on for now. And we've seen others say we'll reschedule it at some point. And I think our agreement here, at, as of now, we feel like having commencement is a very uh, likely thing to happen, um, even if we had you know, things set up like this where it was separated a little bit more. But again, because that's subject to state and uh, federal guidelines, we may be in a situation where it has to be streamed. I read about one college this morning that says they're going to do commencement only with the graduates and stream it over Facebook Live. And no family can come, but all the graduates can come. I, I'm not saying that's what we'll do, but we're going to see in the next four to six weeks a lot more clarity and a lot more options on that. So that's the kind of uh, 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 thing that's going to be a little bit fluid. I would say it's not been canceled. I asked Mr. Posnick to go ahead and get his sermon ready for commencement. And uh, one way or the other, that sermon will be shared uh, even if we have a, a, a delay or a different type of thing. Will there be meals provided on campus for spring break? We are looking at limited food availability here. It won't be the full service during that time, but we'll have meals that are available, and I think the cost will be very, very affordable of that. We'll be looking at ways to accomplish that for you here in the next few days. Um, some people have asked what services will be open and their hours. For instance, I assume the library will still be open from for at least some of the day. I assume the Harvest House will still be open. I don't know that it'll be open until midnight every night, but I'm not sure it needs to be open until midnight every night in a situation like this. So uh, we'll be working on that. There'll be a student development meeting this week to nail down some of those details. Another question that people have asked is about the RAs, and there will be a meeting with student development and the RAs to determine what individual plans are and to adjust. There will be still some campus jobs that are held um, I mean, obviously, we still want to do things like clean. <laughs> That's a big part of what's needed in this time, and many of our workers are cleaning. So if you have an on-campus job, we expect that most of them uh, will continue. If you don't have an on-campus job but stay on campus, you might find yourself working one if the person who did have the on-campus job leaves. So yes, there will still be some on-campus jobs available. If someone here gets COVID-19, which I know has been a concern, we will follow what has been suggested, which is that those who had contact with that person self-quarantine for 14 days. I mean, this has happened to lots of people in lots of places. This can happen to you just as much if you're at home. And in some ways, it's a little easier if it happens here because you kind of know who's here. If, if you're at home and you're roaming around the neighborhood and you go to a store and you know, you find out, well, somebody in this particular grocery store had it and they don't know when they were there or you don't know when you were there exactly, you're in a lot less certain position than you are here. If, if we say, well, no, nobody's showing the symptoms and nobody has had the test come back positive, that'll be better. They're headed towards a world in our, in our uh, country right now, which I think is coming very soon, where the tests will be very easy to get and with a pretty quick, what they're calling a high throughput test, um, we may get to the point where those who are here are tested, you know, first to make sure they either don't have it or haven't had it, or at least symptomatically tested. I do believe they got thermometers for the uh, RAs so that they could check uh, people's, um, people's temperature. Some have asked if it's possible if they leave to get their stuff later. We certainly won't make you take all your stuff with you if you go right now. Sometimes that takes things like, you know, your parents' van and a U-Haul trailer and things like that. And this is not the time to be concerned about whether your stuff is in your room or out of your room. In fact, the checkout procedures are still being determined whether you're going to um, check out now or check out later. So that's part of the reason for the student development meeting that's coming. And so I, I don't want you to, to be stressed about that and uh, have the opportunity to to. Uh, to fear, you know, that your stuff's going to be impounded or disposed of or something like that. That won't happen. Um, a lot of students in a lot of schools are asking about a refund policy. Um, and you need to know that the government is working with colleges and Congress 
right now to sort of create a new, uh, new way to handle the particular student hardship situations that may happen as a result of this, including emergency travel and uh, leave of absence policies and refund policies and things like that. And that's something we're going to have to wait for guidance from, from the federal government. Um, there are several realms in which that could happen. In fact, our financial aid director is attending an online webinar today that the federal government's putting on about how colleges can apply, and you may have even seen this in the news, colleges can apply for emergency grant funds for students that are, dis, uh, that are affected by this, where the college can um, administer it and give students you know, their money for whatever expenses that are unexpected that are occurred in that. And that has all to do with refund policies and things too. So we'll have to get back with you on that. That'll be a good reason for you to check your email. And um, if you have changed your plans, as my plans have changed, I filled out that form right when it came out and I had my plans going here and there, and now I'm not going to any of those places, it's a good idea to resubmit the form because when it comes in, it lists in order. We'll know what your newest submission was and we'll assume your newest submission is true. You can uh, also just email Mr. Ammon directly about that. Um, I'm not sure what our um, discipleship groups are going to look like. I know that's a question some people have. And um, I also understand that if you are going to um, you know, plan to fly back here for something like graduation or at the end, uh, you might be careful with the flight policies. But right now, most of the airlines are being very generous about flight refunds. They are, I mean, they're going to get help from the government too in this particular situation. I have been reading about that. So they're erring on the side of customer service and public health. So I, I would say, you know, if you want to book a flight, you can book a flight. If you don't want to book a flight till later, um, you know, they're probably going to be very, very flexible about that. And as far as your internships go, that's going to be up to your local church or your, lo uh, your location. If, if you are in a situation where your internship's getting canceled because the church is no longer going to be meeting or you're going to do an internship on a six-week mission trip, and they say, you know, we're not taking any six-week mission trips from now for the next six months. Work with Mr. Bradley and your major professor on that, and they will find alternatives for you or help you work around that. Because that is a very real concern with your education, and that's one of the reasons why the government is looking at some of these issues, because they realize, you know, what, what we're facing here is a drop in the bucket compared to a lot of schools, and so um, the cost of doing that um, uh, changes of doing that are, are being evaluated. I am getting questions about whether it's going to cost to stay on campus. I mean, if you've paid to be here this semester, you can stay here, and staying here during spring break will be no extra cost for you. So having those eight or nine or ten days, if, if you need to be here because your family doesn't want you to travel or, or you believe you know, that being here is safer than getting from here to where you want to go, we're not going to charge you any extra from that. Like, it, like I said, there may be a very slight cost in the food service, but I, I think you'll find it to be reasonable, and uh, we'll work our best to, um, to make that uh, announcement as soon as we have that figured out. I will also say that um, you know, assemblies like this are going to have to be um, looked at a little more carefully, so whether that comes down to things like dorm devotions, prayer circles, you know, Getting together to pray, there's nothing in the Bible that says two or three have to hold hands while they pray, right? You know, you can, you can be in four corners of a room and pray, and God hears it just as much as if you're holding hands together. So this is a time for you as, uh, as uh, young people to change some of those habits while you're young. Some of us old people, I mean, we just walk right up and stick our hand out to shake hands because that's what we've been doing for 50 years, and now it's like, oh, I don't even know that person. I'm not sure why I shook their hand because I don't know where it's been. You know, we've got to be a little more careful about that in our society, and that will probably be one of the ongoing positives of this experience. So, listen, I'm sorry to have gone so long. Those were some really good questions you guys sent. You can keep them coming. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, I want us to close with prayer. I've, I've made a, a, a list of some things that I think are appropriate prayers in light of this uh, COVID situation. And if you'll join me, I want, want to just pray for some of them briefly. Let's go to the Lord and bring these things to him. Father, as we are in this situation of uh, unprecedented concern, we lift up things that uh, are on our hearts and that are on the hearts of those around us. We pray for our students here and the decisions that they need to make and the situations they face. 
We pray for our supporters, our churches, and their uncertainty and their concern. We pray for the different churches that are making plans, that they can make the right plans to both support their people and to be safe. Lord, I pray for our staff to be safe here and our faculty and, and the public here in Moberly, that uh, we would not do anything that would harm them and that we would be able to help in any way we can. Lord, I pray for our other sister schools that are struggling with some of these same decisions and whether they're in cities or in rural areas or different states having to adjust their plans because of that. Give them wisdom and, and help those who are working hard but are, are wearing thin through all of the meetings and all of the changes and all of the announcements. Give them strength and peace that will help them face what is coming. Lord, I pray for those who are sick that different efforts to get them well will be successful and that the efforts to prevent this not only through our actions but through different medicines will be successful as well. Help those who are scared right now to have the peace that passes understanding, your perfect peace that comes from you. And we pray for our public leaders to have wisdom that is measured and that is also able to be explained. We pray for those who are concerned about their finances, their jobs, their families and friends, that you would give them peace and that they would be able to bring to you the things that they are most concerned about and find your support. Lord, we pray for communities to be responsible and that in all of this you will be glorified and be seen as the God who's there and cares and stands above it all and provides strength and hope. And Lord, we pray for everything that needs to happen to take place as best as possible so that we can get to the other side of this and move forward doing your will and serving your church and Christ who calls us to be his followers. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks everybody and uh, we'll let you go.